Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a great week so far despite the market action. That is a little bit of what we're going to be talking about in this video. This is going to be a Cardano video where we're going to be giving our outlook for 2022. A lot has taken place over the previous months, the previous weeks, and we're going to be talking about it all in this video as it is really shaping not just our markets but markets across the board. You know, there's a lot going on and we're, we're really going to try and give our outlook, things that we're looking out for um, and try and kind of make sense of everything because there's a lot of uncertainty taking place right now. Lots of questions being thrown around. In yesterday's video, we covered the fact that whales were actually accumulating Cardano or what we refer to as whales, holders with one to 10 million ADA. And this is evident based on on-chain analytics, you know, you can go and look at wallets holding 1 to 10 million Cardano and see that their actual holdings have increased as a, um, a class. Um, and people don't understand, okay, if that's the case, why is the price going down? And we'll, we'll talk about everything. We'll talk about why the price has been downtrending for the past six months. I'm going to talk also about why I'm actually holding on to Cardano. Because given everything that's taking place, it's creating a lot of scarcity. It's a, not scarcity, a lot of scared markets. Um, and ultimately, I'm a believer in ADA. I wouldn't put my name to it like I do if I wasn't. Um, I think it has a very bright future. I think blockchain as an industry, crypto as an industry, has nowhere reached you know, where it's going. It, it, it's very small and has a lot of room to grow if it sees the kind of adoption that I'm anticipating for it. And I think it has a good chance of gaining that adoption. I think something like Cardano, certainly in the emerging world, is very positioned to actually... Um, capture quite a lot of that of value that comes with adoption. So I'm ultimately a believer in ADA, and that's why I hold on to it. Um, I think we've got some really bright things coming around the corner, like 600 projects actually building on top of Cardano. We've seen many other blockchains appreciate from their DeFi space starting to gain total value locked, and we are just starting to see that. Um, but you also have to remember that Cardano is a part of the crypto space, and the crypto space is now part of kind of global markets you know it, it, it's tethered to a lot of what's going on right now it doesn't just move in its own little bubble anymore we all wanted including myself institutions to get on board with crypto we've seen that we've not seen it in any kind of a massive volume but we've certainly seen retail in, uh, or institutional involvement sorry and this has shaped how our market is now looking you guys will know that we were essentially expecting um you know 2021 to kind of end in a bit of a spectacular fashion into kind of, you know, I was expecting sort of January, February to quite good months for crypto. And we were following something called the Bitcoin four-year cycle theory, which we followed for a long time. And that didn't play out. Now, we've been publicly calling out Cardano since here, guys. Um, and ultimately, it's done very, very well since then. But we were expecting it to go a little bit further. It didn't pan out like that. We've been very right about the market direction really up until the end of the year where we were expecting things to go higher and they didn't. Um, and, and really it kind of invalidated, in my opinion, the Bitcoin four-year cycle theory, which sees this kind of blow off top every single time to the end of the cycle. You kind of finish in this kind of a fashion. That didn't play out. And instead, we actually got a sideways year for what is supposed to be the kind of parabolic end to the bull run. Now, as that's been validated... I don't think that we kind of rinse and repeat and we enter a two year long bear market. I don't think the market follows what has previously driven our market, which has been the halvening that takes place every four years, which you can see here in the green lines. I don't think we rinse and repeat these cycles as we have. I think there is going to be an element of the supply shock that the halvening creates and the price of Bitcoin having to adjust accordingly to make sure miners are profitable and so on and so forth, which is essentially all that's driven the four-year cycle theory. I don't think we do that. I think right now, what's happening with crypto, what's happening with Cardano is macro markets, geopolitical events, and everything else is weighing heavily on our asset class. Um, and the outlook that I really have for 2022 is that we're going to be in a little bit of turmoil until there is some sort of a resolve and a clear direction with geopolitical events um, and with monetary policy, which is still very uncertain. What you guys have got to remember, and we'll use Cardano, but we could use any chart. March 2020 saw a pretty horrific event for um, finance. 
for economies across the world. We saw a free fall, essentially, of everything as the world stopped, um, right or wrongly. And what the Fed had to do and governments around the world, and Jerome Powell has admitted this, was essentially flood the system with money to keep things afloat. That's the tool that they've always ran back to. It's why Bitcoin, by the way, was created in 2008. Um, Satoshi in his first, in the Genesis block, actually wrote the Chancellor's just um, okayed, I think it was a second round of, of, of bank bailouts, I can't quite remember. Um, and he really created Bitcoin as a way to give people a value system that didn't involve a government, you know, that didn't involve um, tinkering. You know, it, it's maths that you're trusting, essentially. It's code that you're trusting. And it, it, it's really proven itself as a hedge against the dollar. Um, but like I say, it's uncharted waters that we're moving into. It's going to be very, very telling and revealing to see how Bitcoin, importantly, and the crypto space at, what, at, at large, holds up given everything that's happening. We're seeing the likes of gold do very well. The video that we're going to put out after this one is going to be in regards to commodities. Um, somewhat of a warning to people, but somewhat of things to look out for and that to pay attention to, because given everything that's happening with Russia right now uh, and some of the sanctions that they're levying against them and the way that we are now going to essentially cut them off of global markets or the Western markets, as they are a big supplier of things like wheat, fertilizer, oil, gas, grain, and a number of other things, this could cause a bit of a disaster and a furthering of commodities going up. If commodities continue to go up, who does that hurt most? Somebody like me is going to be relatively all right, as I'll be able to afford them in more of a manner than other people, um, because I've done quite well off crypto. But it hurts everybody. It, hurt, it hurts people and people become less fruitful. They have less sort of money. Their wages in many accounts don't actually, um, well, certainly in the United States, most people do not, 40% of Americans don't even have $1,000 set aside. So what happens when their wages, which haven't gone up 200% to account for oil or um, whatever it may be, now don't stretch as far. You know, you end up with a real tightening economy and that of course weighs in on the crypto space so march 2020 caused an event when markets got inflated we've now got a cooling off of that which is kind of natural um, because a stimulus isn't there in that kind of a volume they're also talking about upping um interest rates so the fed fund rate this has caused a kind of slowing down and markets to adjust and then we go into all these geopolitical um, issues which have a direct effect on economies across the world um, and crypto has to contend with all that. It has to make its way through all of that. And this is what we're trying to look at. So I think ultimately, there's a lot of issues right now with um, kind of global macroeconomics. I think that that is what is really shaping the cryptocurrency spaces price, the cryptocurrency chart right now. Uh, but we're actually seeing, and I would argue this, Bitcoin and some of your cryptos do quite well in the face of all this given how badly you're kind of some of your equities like the Nasdaq, some of your tech stocks are kind of selling off. So very quickly to recap, I think that we're no longer following the Bitcoin four year cycle theory. And I think we're following a structure where I think the chart looks more, it has more of everything else in it rather than the crypto market just moving off its own accord. Remember, like I say, we were calling Cardano out down here. And essentially, publicly, we were doing that, by the way. You can go back on my videos and watch. And essentially, it's gone up, you know, 17x since then. We were expecting it to go further. We had price predictions set for the end of cycle at around about $7.50. It didn't get there. I was wrong about how things were going to end in 2021 and into this year. They've looked drastically different. But of course, there's a lot of geopolitical events tie into that. Now, does that, believe, does that mean that I no longer believe Cardano can get to those kind of prices, that it can get to those kind of, um, that kind of a market cap that the likes of Ethereum have? Absolutely not. I still think into the future, we will achieve those prices. And there's a real, you know, how everything kind of plays out. I mean, you know, when, when you look at Bitcoin being really created to bypass the Federal Reserve, bypass you fear systems that are controlled by governments, which it was Ludwig von Mises that said, um, governments are really the only people who are capable of taking a perfectly valuable commodity like paper and making it worthless. You know, given everything that's happening, how do 
governments just to, the way I'm viewing things, they're going to have to stimulate the economy even more. They may pull things back slightly, but they're still going to have to stimulate. Certainly, if you have the likes of a recession looming, which there is absolutely the potential for and becomes more and more likely as we see prices rise, as we see the yield curve start to turn. So there is so much going on. It's important to, and people go, why are you talking about that, all this stuff on a crypto channel? It's 100% relevant. And if you miss that and you don't pay attention to that and understand that that's affecting our market, you aren't going to understand the full picture here. You're going to be left rather confused. Very quickly, I always get comments. We, we, we had essentially, in yesterday's video, looked at the fact that addresses with 1 to 10 million Cardano were accumulating. They'd grown, um, which suggests they're accumulating. And they really accumulated down here. Heavily, you can see that they actually, what it looks like is you get them like this. They dump here. And then they just stay stagnant and then they go up like that. That's what those addresses and their holdings look like. People go, okay, well, if that's the case, why is the price selling off? Well, what you've got to understand, and this is the Google Trends for Cardano over the past 12 months in the United Kingdom. What we'll do is we'll change this actually globally. So this is worldwide. Look at where we are today, ladies and gentlemen. I'll quickly move my face out of the way. We are at an all-time low. So we have very low retail involvement. We had high... Um, Google Trends, which kind of really, in my opinion, is a good way to determine how much retail interest there is, how many people are buying, what the excitement is. You can see back on the 28th of August, which quite literally timed the top, you were at an all-time high on Google Trends. And back here in um, the 15th of March, again, or the 15th of May, sorry, you were at all-time highs. So Google Trends is actually quite a good way to track retail involvement and the kind of FOMO that ensues. And it's always retail that gets dumped on, by the way, guys. Right now, it's pretty much at an all-time low. So, you know, that essentially means that there's very little, and we can check on the volume charts. People go, okay, well, why is the price? I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, let's make this volume chart a little bit more visible. Look at the volume. The volume is extremely low, which means we don't have the kind of involvement that we have over here, which means it takes less to cause the price to sell off. And what you have, Cardano works as a proof of stake. It also has projects that build on top of it that need to fund their development. It also um, has the likes of NFT projects. You know, it has sell pressure from all over the place. And that sell pressure doesn't necessarily go away uh, just because the involvement from retail isn't there. So for stake pools, for example, um, a lot of stake pool operators, I don't, and I'm not saying it's negative that anybody does this or, or, or saying any kind of way, but a lot of stake pool operators will sell the card on that they get rewarded for. Every single leap up, they'll sell the card on that they, they get rewarded for running a stake pool. That is constant sell pressure that doesn't go away. You have projects building on top of Cardano that have to fund their projects, rightfully so, because they're creating amazing things that are really potentially going to change the world. They need to sell Cardano to pay people because most people don't take their wages in ADA, certainly developers that they've hired. Also, you have NFT projects. You have a lot of sell pressure that is consistent that during a downtrend like this stays consistent when you have low volume and little retail involvement to push the price back up like you had over here. How price works is if you have more buy pressure than sell pressure. So if you have more buy pressure than sell pressure, the price goes up. And if you have more sell pressure than buy pressure, the price goes down. It's price is determined on the margin and that's what's coming in and out of markets essentially. So you have more people selling than you have buying, which is how you get a downtrend. It's very simple, but people seem to not, um, they always ask me, why is the price going down when we have the likes of whales? It's almost like they're in disbelief that things are actually happening. We have to be real here in the same way that I have to turn around and go, okay, we got how 2021 was going to end wrong. And we did. We got a lot of things right. We picked a lot of altcoins that have done very, very well. But we are going to get things wrong from time to time. That's how it goes. Um, you know, we need to be real with this situation. We need to also understand that everything that's going on right now affects our market. There's no getting away from that whatsoever. And if we see the economy go into a downturn as a result of rising commodity prices that are getting completely out of hand now, look at nickel. We're going to do a longer video on this. I actually think they stopped the trade, the markets on nickel today. Um, I'm pretty sure they actually did. 
yeah, you can see they actually, they, they said, right, that's it. We're not trading it anymore because it was just going ballistic. I was having conversations. I have meetings with people that are into macroeconomics, people that are actually part of firms that are all pointing this out and going, okay, well, if we're, if this is happening, this is typically not good for the economy. You've got that, you know, there's just so much going on and you guys need to understand that. But one thing for me to stress, again, I am not going anywhere. We're not leaving Cardano because we believe in what's being achieved here. Yes, short term, we've got markets that are being a bit of a nightmare. They're going up and down. But there's good times and bad times within markets. You know, any ship can sail really on plain waters. But when those seas get rough, it's the good ships that will make it and not capsize. And that's what we're trying to be, guys. So we've got very little volume. We've got a negative overall sentiment, which is causing the price to do what it's doing. Ultimately, I think we could be in for some chop. Let's get rid of some of these lines. I think we could be in for some chop. I don't think Cardano is going to zero. I don't think it's going to drop off the face of the earth. I just think we've got a lot to contend with right now and that we will find our feet within it for many of the fundamental reasons. You know, eventually we will start to go back up, but that's going to be correlated with the environment being right. Because just like Jeff Bezos talking about Amazon and talking about how the stock price back in the in, in the dot com crash went from 107 to 7 had no reflection on the Amazon as a company, but more the um you know macro sort of setting, the macro backdrop. Cardano's the exact same and in the exact same position today. But that value, we've never been in such a strong position. We we're in a stronger position today than we were up here, guys. So we're in a stronger position here at this kind of a, a, a price, you know, 80 cents, than we were at $3. The price doesn't reflect that. And that, to me, suggests that we're undervalued, given, you know, over a long-term hori time horizon, that gets recognized. So calling things short-term in these markets, you're essentially second-guessing world events. You're second-guessing global leaders. Not the smartest thing to do. We've tried it, and we do continue to do TA. Certainly, personally, I do a lot of it. But things, in my opinion, will get better. It's just a case of, of being able to ride out of the storm, essentially. And that's what we're in at the moment. We're in a bit of a turbulent storm. You know, Bitcoin is holding up well. Potentially, I'd have expected it to hold up a little bit better, given the fact that this is what it was made to do. But then you also have to kind of factor in the, 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 the fact that we have institutions involved and they're not going to want to sit through risk. They're not going to want to sit through risky time periods in a risky asset. And one thing that I want to love and leave you on is you have to remember that not everything has really taken place yet. So yes, we're starting to put sanctions on Russia. Yes, we're starting to say we don't want any of their goods, which is going to have a knock-on effect on the world because some countries, Germany, Turkey, are very reliant on those goods. We haven't seen the effects of that yet. So that could see increase in commodities, which we're going to talk about after this video. Uh, around about half seven, so an hour after this video comes out, uh, GMT. Um, you know, we've not seen this play out yet. And it, it, it's, like I say, uncharted waters for the crypto space. We'll have to see. But I'm still in Cardano because I believe in it. I think it's where Ethereum was in terms of price. Um, and I think it, it's still going to appreciate greatly over the long-term time horizon. And I'm an investor in ADA, and I'm going to continue to be one. I think we have a very bright future. I think we've got things coming for us that have seen other smart contract layer ones um, or layer one blockchains do exceptionally well. And I think that value gets realized over the long term. Right now, we're really affected by macro uh, markets. We're really affected by geopolitical events, but things will get better, ladies and gentlemen. And I really want to love and leave you on that note. That is really all I have for you in this video. Before I go, guys, we do have the stake pool. All in is the ticker. We are at 4.2 million Cardano stake. Absolute dream of mine and a huge thank you to each and every one of you who have choose, chosen to delegate with myself. Um, that is it, guys. So I'm going to love and leave you. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. Try not to let markets get you down too much. Understand that there's a lot going on right now. And I think if people can weather the storm, they'll actually be um, okay. And I'm ultimately, you know, still expect Cardano to do great things. I just think we've got a lot to contend with right now that we have to take into account. All I have, guys, thanks a lot for watching.